Afternoon, folks. How are you? You're very welcome to Crow Park. As it happens, Jim McGuinness was in my class at school, so wouldn't he be very proud to see me keeping the place lit for him for the, for the next time Donegal come here. So, I was asked a while back to do this, and it's so long ago I'd actually forgotten what I was supposed to talk about today. So I prepared two talks for you to give you a choice, and one was why solo travel allows the best opportunities for self-exploration, and there was a less exciting one on the best ways to increase employee, employee engagement and performance. So who'd like to hear the exciting one on solo travel? You want to hear about solo travel? And who wants to hear the boring one on employee performance? Anybody? So you want to hear a boring you want to hear a boring one as well. No problem at all. Unfortunately I have bad news for you because when I got here today and I discovered that I actually did have a title, and it is a job something to pay the bills and a career something you're interested in. Well let's Let's examine that, but first of all, what I'd like to do is find out who am I talking to here today. Um, so could I get a show of hands? How many of you are here uh, early in your careers, you're looking for your first job? Anybody at all? So you're all a bit further along. How, how many of you are here just for a look today? Looking around, you're here just for a wee look around. A few of you, yeah, uh, experimenting. How many of you are actively changing job? You've got your CVs out there. Good few of you. How many of you are thinking of changing career? You're on a career. Good few on career change as well. Now, I have one final hard question. How many of you actually don't know what you want to be when you grow up? That's all of us. That's me too. <laughs> so... Anyway, that gives me an idea of who I'm talking to anyway. So, a job. What is a job? Well, a job is something like doing the dishes, painting the ceiling at home, it can be mowing the lawn, and it can be also what you do in exchange, to exchange your time for money. So let's look at what's a career. Well, a career is that period of your life that you do jobs and exchange your time for money, but it's generally accepted that what a career is is a singular chosen occupation of one's liking that you gain experience and stature as you proceed throughout your career. And I suppose really less than 10% of people actually have that. Would anybody agree with that? There's a good few people would agree with that. Um, so the difference between a job and a career, it really is, it's semantic. It's what do you call a job, what do you call a career? So, when I talk to HR managers, generally the question that they are asking is what can we do to provide meaning and engagement for the employees? Now, it's a good question, but it's probably the wrong question. The right, the right question should be what are employees bringing to the organisation from their lives that will apply meaning and engagement in the workplace? So. I recently conducted a study, I was in UCD and it was, uh, what I did was I took what I had already read in the McKinsey report of November 2021 and there was a Microsoft report in September 21. Both of them surveys were global so I decided to see what, how does Ireland match up on a global scale and generally it does match up fairly Fairly the same as, as the global world in, in engagement and meaning and job satisfaction and everything that goes along with it. But what I did was I added a few things, a few more personal questions in along with it. And some of the findings were surprising, some of them were less surprising. One of the most surprising things that we found out was that 36% of people who quit their jobs last year actually left without having a job to go to. Isn't that surprising? Has anybody actually quit? Yeah, and nothing lined up. So it was a push factor rather than a pull factor for yourself. 
Um, and I'm not going to ask you why, but I mean, you're not unusual. 36% of people did that. A less surprising was there's a mismatch between what employees find as meaningful versus what employers thought that employees valued. So there's a big mismatch in that as well. Um, but the most surprising thing that I found out was 70% of people don't have a PDP. And in fact, most people actually don't even know what a PDP is. Does anybody know the acronym PDP? Have you heard of it? No. So there you go, there's the answer. Uh, like it's commonly known, it, it's a personal development plan or a professional development plan and 70% of employees don't have that. I mean, it doesn't matter if you're the kitchen porter or the CEO, you should have some sort of a development plan in place for you and don't wait for HR to, to put it in for you. I mean, it is there in a lot of workplaces, but it's there only as a word on paper. But really, you guys, you really do need to have a PDP. So how do you do a PDP? Um, there are a few steps. So what I'm going to do is, I've put up 10 points here for you today. Oh, there's the title now that I'd forgotten. Um, so I have 10 points here for you today. None of them is more important than the other. The only reason I have them numbered is if I'm boring the pants off you, at least you know how long more you've left to tolerate me. Is that okay? So the first place you need to start is begin by asking yourself, how can I serve? That's really important because it doesn't matter what species you are on the planet, whether you're a human, a fish or a fungus, your primary objective on the planet is to make more of yourself, send your genes forward. And in order to do that, you've got to set up the right environment for yourself and your progeny. Not only that they'll survive, but they'll thrive and reproduce as well. Now, the problem is we're doing that in concert with every other homo, homo sapiens that's out there as well. So that's not an easy thing to find the part that you're going to serve, but it is important that you give thought to the part you're going to serve, who you're going to serve, how you're going to serve them, and how they're going to benefit from your service. And in that way, you set up the environment from your, for your offspring. Who am I? Do any of you know who you are? few people laughing. You think you know who you are. Um, many of us don't know who we are. Um, so to find out who you are really requires some rational, deep, solo travel to the inner reaches of your mind. And when I say solo travel, I actually really mean solo travel. When we go to think about something, whatever it is we're, we're thinking about, we always involve the people in our lives. We involve your significant other. What do my parents think? Will I be still popular among my friends if I do this? Uh, will I go to jail if I do this? Do you know? So we always involve everybody else in our everybody else in our thought process. But it really does require solo travel into your mind. Now the easiest way of finding out who are you is ask your worst enemy. They'll fairly quickly tell you who you are. And it is true, um, it's biologically true. I mean, oxytocin, we've probably all heard of it as being the cuddle chemical. Did anybody hear of it, of oxytocin being that? But what's less known about oxytocin is it's a stress response neurotransmitter and it exaggerates how we view people from outside our in-group. So you can be guaranteed that your enemy knows you very every bit as much as you know them because you know who they are. So they'll know who you are as well. But there's an easier way of finding out who you are. And that would be to do some personality tests on yourself. Now, there's lots of personality tests available online. Some of them are good, some of them not so good. And most of them will only tell you the nice stuff about yourself. So it's probably important that you maybe would engage a career coach, somebody that knows a bit about the actual scientifically validated personality tests, to tell you the stuff that you don't like about yourself as well. Because look at 
we are biased as humans um, and we, we, all, we like to think the best of ourselves. But if you don't know what's lurking underneath there for yourself, that can raise its ugly head if you find yourself in a job that you're really not suited to. Maybe you like the job, but maybe you're not suited to it. So the next point then is to ask yourself what interests you. So, again, you need to have a look at yourself and your interests. And that really goes back into what are your hobbies? What are your real passions? What did you like to do as a kid? Did you like to make mud pies? Did you like to be climbing trees? All them things come into, come into um, find out what interests you. Now, your unique gifts and talents then are what hobbies did you actually become good at? So when you started off making mud pies, did you actually end up then being a very good baker or a cook? Um, or are you a musician? And is that something you can actually charge money for, be it as, a, as an employee of somebody else or in your own business? What skills do I want to utilize? Now, this is where finding out the ugly things in your personality is important. So if you're a musician, you might be a fantastic piano player, guitar player, great singer, but if you're on the introvert side, and standing in front of a crowd isn't something that appeals to you. Just not the one you should be going for. Maybe you should look at a plan B for yourself. Um, there's also the trade-off as well. Maybe you do like being in front of a crowd and playing to the audience. But do I really want the late nights, the travel, the not seeing my family from one end of the month to the next end of the month, seeing them maybe once or twice a year? It's a trade-off you need to ask yourself as well. What industries am I interested in? Well, I suppose there's many ways of finding out what you're interested in. I mean, a few of you, I'm just looking around, is there younger people here that have done TUI? Unfortunately, I'm of an age that TUI wasn't around when I was there. But now that we are this age, there's no reason why you can't do TUI in your 30s, 40s, even your 50s or 60s. So what I would probably do is find a friend or somebody you look up to and ask them, talk to them about their work um, and ask maybe can you shadow them in their work, in their workplace, go around for a few days and do what they do. I mean, the worst they can do is say no, ask somebody else. What values would I like to express through my work? So, the litmus test for the values that you want to, to utilize through your work is, I suppose, ask yourself, if I wasn't going to get paid to do what I do, what would I do? What would I do all day long without getting paid? Or the same might apply if money was no object, if you were getting paid anything you wanted, what would you do? Because when it comes to those cold, dark, winter mornings and it's spilling rain outside or it's hailstones and you have a puncture on the tyre or you have to wait 10 minutes on the bus. What's going to get you out of that bed when the alarm clock goes off? So that's an important question to ask yourself. What type of work environment would I like? Again, are you introvert? Are you extrovert? If you're, if you're introvert, maybe a nice desk job is a nice job for you or work in something, do you know, with, with electronics or something like that. If you're extrovert, do you really want to be sitting down at that boring desk job all day? Maybe you want to be out there selling something. Um, the next one then is what's my mission? What's your mission in life? Well, I'm going to skip on to number 10. What is your vision? And the reason I'm going to do that is because the two work in concert with each other. So if you set up your vision first, start at the very end and work back and work out your mission from your vision and the two of them work together as a sort of a feedback loop, they feed into each other. So a mission and vision statement is, it's a paragraph that encapsulates everything that you would like to be, do and have. 
in your life and your career and your family. So that's your vision. Your mission then is how am I going to get there? So essentially, your vision is your destination and your mission is the map on how to get there. So if you get them things right, then um, you can start setting your goals back from getting your mission and statement right. And that's the start really of doing a PDP. Drawing up your PDP, that's a whole other lesson, but that's the good start to, to getting it done. So it's like, can anybody shout up, have you any holiday plans this year? Where are you going? Somebody shout out. Anybody going away? So I suppose nobody's going on holidays this year. How I would say the, the vision and mission statement and the goals work is think of a holiday. So if you pick Florida out of your head, that's the vision. The mission then is, okay, what am I, what am I going to do that? Well, I've got to book the hotel and the flights. Then you set the goals back from that. How much spending money do I need? How much is it going to cost? Um, how am I go what am I going to wear when I go out there? Am I going to bring my holiday clothes with me or am I going to buy clothes out there? Then getting to the airport on the morning, am I going to get a taxi? Am I going to stay in a hotel the night before? Am I going to drive there? So they're all the little goallets, but they're all set. You're working backwards and closer to the time you work on the little things, but it all starts with having the vision of what your holiday is. Well, your life should be no different. Um, so there's a little, that's the encapsulation there. It's a paragraph that encapsulates everything you would like to be, do and have in your life and career. It defines what success and excellence look like to you. It expresses your vision for where you want to be in the future. It reflects your own values, goals and purpose on how you want to operate in the world. So again, your vision is your map. Your, uh, your vision is your destination and your mission is your map. So they're really very, very important things to have in play. So get your PDP in place and then that'll kind of help you to find, no matter what age you are in your life, whether you're starting out in your career or whether you're a career changer, even if you're retiring, what are you going to do when you retire? Do you want to have something to do as well? So your personal development plan is important at all stages of your life. So I'm Pat, thanks a million today for, for listening to me. Does anybody have any questions at all? Pat, could I ask a question? So you briefly touched on the online personality tests you can do. A few of my friends have done that. And um, as you said, some of them, you know, you hear just great things about yourself. But what if you do a test and you actually hear some negative things? Can you kind of change them? Absolutely, you can. I mean, the certain, the, the certain personality traits, so personality is stable from the time you're born to the time you die, but there are certain things that happen in your life that shape what your personality is. So one of the traits, I suppose, I don't know about your friends, but neurotism. So if you discover you're high in neurotism, that's a thing that maybe we find socially undesirable, but that's a very, very valuable trait to have in certain situations and environments and workplaces. So if you find that you are high in that trait, it's time maybe to find something that, that suits you. And perhaps maybe maybe you want to be a manager, but if you are high in that trait, maybe think twice about that. Perhaps being a yoga teacher is a very good job, but I'm not making a joke out of that, you know. Um, a nice relaxing career for yourself there. So it's kind of know your own lane. And when you're going for job interviews and you're aware of some of your weaknesses, because we all have weaknesses, and you know it's kind of maybe a bit stereotypical, but people tend to ask, what are your weaknesses in job interviews? Would you be open and kind of share, well, this is my weakness? What I would do there is, once you identify your weakness, follow that sentence along then with what am I doing to identify my weaknesses and how am I addressing them and maybe demonstrate that I've identified my weakness but I've done this, this, this and this and now I'm here. That's great. If we don't have any more questions, please put your hands together for Pat Finnerty. That was fantastic. Thank you so much.